Is once saved, always saved the historic teaching of the church? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society, and I have some good news for you today. In my last YouTube video, I discussed the introduction to a documentary entitled Once Saved, Always Saved, a documentary film. In this video, I'm going to look at part one, which is where they discuss once saved, always saved, and church history. And there are basically six issues that this portion of the documentary raises. Issue number one, is once saved, always saved, the historic teaching of the early church? Brian, if you would, play clip number one. Believers in Once Saved, Always Saved invariably take the high ground historically as though they're defending the historic faith. This is incredibly dishonest. That's because before Augustine's novel teachings in the early 5th century, absolutely no one in the early church believed in Once Saved, Always Saved. I know of no patristic scholar or church historian who disputes that fact. The answer of these scholars on the video is no. Once saved, always saved is not the historic teaching of the early church. And they are absolutely correct. Let's move on to issue number two. Does once saved, always saved teach that apostasy that is falling away from the faith is impossible? If you would, Brian, play clip number two. In the Reformation of the 16th century, you have Luther, who believes, just like the fathers on this, he believes that it is possible to commit apostasy. He actually comes against the teaching of once saved, always saved, but he did believe that there were certain people that were given the special gift, uh, who were the elect, who would be given the gift of perseverance. His view of perseverance seems to be the same as Augustine that we can never be sure in this life that we will be given the gift of perseverance until the day of our death. For Luther, there was the warning of final damnation for those who fell away and walked away from the faith. So it's really amazing. You have the once saved, always saved doctrine repudiated by the early church. You know, the first three centuries of church history. Uh, you have Augustine picking it up from the Gnostics and bringing it into the church, but only teaching that uh, the elect among saved people uh, will persevere and no one knows who they are. I find this portion of the video fascinating because they discuss two different types of Christians, according to Augustine and even Calvin. They say that Augustine and Calvin taught that there were a group of Christians called the elect who were guaranteed that they were going to persevere till the end of their lives in faith and good works and that the elect were eternally secure. But then there were other Christians who were born again but because they were not elect, they were going to fall away and fail to persevere, and those people lose their salvation. So in this view, apostasy is possible. Falling away from the faith is possible. And if you do fall away, then you lose your salvation. In my view, that is not once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved would say that once I'm saved, I'm always saved even if I fail to persevere. But I believe they have accurately measured the fact that there are lots of people in Christianity who believe once saved, always saved is true if you persevere to the end. Issue number three is, is assurance of everlasting life possible under once saved, always saved? If you would, Brian, play clip number three. And then you have it going to John Calvin. I think Calvin is the one who takes it even further. Um, like, I guess that's why we call it Calvinism, not Lutheranism. Once saved, always saved, as we know it today, actually stems back to John Calvin and his followers. He wrote his work of systematic theology entitled 
Institutes of the Christian Religion, which is largely built on Augustine's teachings. He says that his whole theology could be uh, systemized through by just quoting Augustine's teaching. The main difference between Calvin and Augustine is that although Augustine emphasized that we cannot know for certain until the day of our death that we are of the elect, Calvin emphasized that there are clear indications in this life. But it was Calvin who basically took that last idea that, you know, the elector gave him the gift of perseverance and said that all Christians, anyone who comes to Christ and receives him, uh, has the gift of perseverance and will be finally and, and irrevocably and inevitably saved. The answer to the video is it's possible basically for the Calvinist the same way it's possible for the Arminian. You look at your life and you see, am I faithful? Am I faithful enough? Do I see a steady pattern of growth? And does this suggest I'm going to persevere to the end? My response would be, as if you look at all to your works for assurance, you won't have assurance. You can't have assurance. As David Engelsma, a five-point Calvinist, who rejects the idea that we have to persevere in order to retain our salvation or in order to prove we're saved, he calls modern Puritanism, the English branch of the Reformation, a gospel of doubt. Because people are always on a lifelong quest looking for evidences that they're truly the elect. So there really is no certainty of everlasting life among those who hold to once saved, always saved, unless they believe that perseverance is not required in order to get into the kingdom. Issue number four is, is it true that most branches of Christianity today do not believe in once saved, always saved. Brian, if you would play clip number four. So Calvin diverged from the tradition that came before him. He even diverged from what other Reformation leaders taught. But then after him, the Baptists, most of them, I'm free will Baptist, but most of the Baptists diverge with him from the Christian tradition. The Reformed Presbyterian tradition diverges with Calvin from the mainstream Christian tradition. But then when you look at the rest of Christianity today, they don't believe in once saved, always saved, or the certain perseverance of the saints. The majority of Christians uh, in America or elsewhere don't affirm the idea of eternal security. That's just not part of their DNA. The whole Methodist denomination, I mean, the second largest Protestant denomination in America is the United Methodist Church. Well, the answer, according to this video and the scholars on it, is that most branches of Christianity today do not teach once saved, always saved. And I heartily agree. The evidence is overwhelming. Issue number five is how does someone who rejects once saved, always saved, have confidence that they will keep their salvation? If you would, Brian, play clip number five. Recognizing that believers will fail as the followers of Jesus failed in the Gospels themselves is a crucial understanding of the Christian life. We will have some good days and some bad days, but the pattern of our life over time is faithfulness and a steady growth. I love this clip. I'd encourage you to play it multiple times. Scott McKnight captures what most Arminians and even most Calvinists would say as far as their level of confidence that they're likely to persevere and make it into the kingdom. He says that we can be confident of our eternal destiny and we can be confident that we will persevere if quote, the pattern of our lives over time is faithfulness and a steady growth, unquote. Of course, there can be no certainty that I am going to be found faithful, that I am going to persevere to the end. And since that's impossible, 
none of the scholars on this video know for sure where they're going when they die. The only way anyone can be sure of their eternal destiny is to believe what the Lord Jesus Christ says in John 3.16, that God so loved the world and gave His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him will not perish but has everlasting life. Jesus said nothing about one who believes in him and perseveres in belief or and perseveres in good works and perseveres to the end. The moment a person believes in Christ, he's part of the whoever believes in him and he or she is eternally secure. The sixth issue is what difference does it make that once saved, always saved is not the historic teaching of the early church and it's not the teaching of most brand branches of Christianity today. The implication from the scholars in this video is that it disproves once saved, always saved. My response would be, it makes no difference whatsoever, because truth is found and validated in Scripture. Truth is not necessarily found or validated in church history. Much of what church history rejects is actually true, and we can't base our understanding of truth on church history. We must base it on Scripture. We do not determine truth by a majority vote. We determine it by God's vote, by seeing what God says. If you liked what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember, keep grace in focus. I love you guys.